Today we'll start talking about generics, traits and lifetimes in Rust. Maybe some of you already heard these terms or at least the generic terms. Let's try to clarify what these terms are for the Rust programming language. What's the goal of generics, traits and lifetimes? We want to avoid code duplication. Check the code here on the left and check the code here on the right. For example, we want a function that finds the largest integer in a slice. And then we also want a function that finds the largest character in a slice. The logic is similar, but we have a different type. So we can implement a way to have a single function that takes a generic type. Maybe generics are not that easy to understand at the beginning, but of course they are very powerful. The generics allow to use and write flexible and reusable functions and types using different types without sacrificing the performance of our code. We'll see an example at the end of a swap function, which has, you see this T, this means generic. It has some generics inputs. For example, let's say that we want to swap either strings or numbers, but the concept of swapping, it's a more abstract concept. We already saw generics in this course at least four times, probably even more. We saw this in when we introduced the option. I remind you that we don't have null in the Rust, so this is handled by this option t, because this can be anything or known when we introduced the vector collection so we can have a vector of characters a vector of numbers so this has a generic type when we introduced the hash maps with key value pairs this is why you see key v can have a hash map of strings and integers like key value pairs and check this out result we saw this in the previous video about error handling we have a result with te because we can have anything here usually this is what we would like to have or an error here which can be a string or something else let's talk about traits and this might sound new as a term but what if i tell you interfaces Maybe more people are familiar with the term of interface in many other programming languages, for example, Java. This is used to indicate an abstract behavior of something. You can see here at the top, we can define this trait with the trait keyword, I like it, and then we can use this trait when we implement a method in a struct. If you're not understanding this, please check the struct videos and methods. You can see here on line 5, let's say that we want, for example, summarize something, but we want to summarize both a news article or a tweet. Check line 5 and 16. So the concept of summarizing is the same, but maybe the struct of a news article and a tweet, they have different... Uh, values. For example, for news articles, we have headline and content. For a tweet, we have username and content. We want here to implement the trait in the method of the struct here. Check line 10 is very important. Impl, implement, impl, summary, which is basically this sort of interface for news article. And this is how we implement the summary for the news article. And check LAN 21, we implement a summary for the tweet. And in this case, you see that we have a self username and self content. Instead, for the news article, we have check line 12, format, self headline, self content. And then we can use summarize both for a news article and a tweet. We can create instances of news articles and tweets, and then we can summarize them. Traits are very useful because of the abstraction. They can be reusable, and we are applying basically the concept of polymorphism. So we can enable functions to operate on any type that implements that trait. We will have a specific lesson about traits. So this is just an introduction. Let's see also an introduction to lifetime. So we'll have a specific lesson, but just let's try to grasp the concept here. Let's check the code here. It's not very easy to understand, but focus on line one. The lifetimes, they ensure that the references are valid for as long as they are needed. And this is to avoid dangling references in Rust. If you are not getting what I'm saying, check references, borrowing and ownership in Rust in the previous videos. Let's focus for a moment for this with the syntax and let's try to digest it. Fn longest 
basically we want uh, the longest string here we are getting this tick a which is specify this uh, generic lifetime parameter and then we have two parameters that also have the lifetime tick a x this is a reference to a lifetime of type string here both for x and y and we see that as a return type this is a string slice that lives at least as long as the lifetime tick a so this is to avoid to having a dangling reference when we are calling this function this is a more advanced concept but this is just to have an idea that this is basically to avoid code duplication and to ensure that the references are still valid when they are needed. Generics, traits and lifetimes are used to avoid code duplication. For example, here we have two blocks to swap two elements of the same type, but check how much code we have to type here. We have to use an additional variable, a temporary variable, then we have to say a equal b, b equal temp. So this is out of work and you check again. We need to do this again when we have two strings. Code duplication is not necessarily bad, but uh, the code is less maintainable. When I want to make some changes, I need to apply these changes to all the parts and this usually introduces some errors. Let's see an example of generics. We import the replace function and we import this uh, standard library memory replace and check line 5, very important, function swap t which takes two inputs of a generic type. Check how simple this function is. This is exactly what we want. We define this temporary variable and then we replace x with y with this uh, syntax. It's basically one line of code. We can do this both for numbers and strings. Of course we use a reference. We don't want to take ownership of the variable in input but we want just a reference to that value to being able to swap the two variables. A quick recap, the generics are used to write flexible and reusable code using some placeholder for the type. Usually is T, it can also be K, B, for example, for hash maps, but the idea is that we want some code that works for different types. In some cases, this can be very, very useful. Traits, you can read this as interfaces, even if they are not exactly the same. We will make a specific lesson about traits, no worries. And the idea is to define a shared abstract behavior between some implementations. And the lifetimes are used to be sure that we have a reference which is still valid and to prevent dangling references when we are using other variables in our code. We are getting into concepts that are not basic. We are starting to use something more powerful and of course soon we will be able to do something which is more cool. So thanks everyone. This is the end of the video.